So what exactly is knowledge translation? There, there are a number of different definitions, and there's actually quite a number of different terms um, that are used to mean the same thing. So depending on what country you're, you're in, um, it may be known as implementation science, there's research utilization, knowledge mobilization. But here in Canada, we do use the term knowledge translation. And the Canadian Institute for Health Research um, defines KT, or knowledge translation, as a dynamic and iterative process that includes synthesis, dissemination, exchange, and ethically sound application of knowledge to improve the health of Canadians, provide more effective health services and products, and strengthen the healthcare system. The World Health Organization has a very similar definition. Uh, they define KT as the synthesis, exchange, and application of knowledge by relevant stakeholders to accelerate the benefits of global and local innovation in strengthening health systems and improving people's health. So there's a lot of commonalities to a lot of these definitions. Um, and it's a fairly broad definition that starts with the synthesis of all available evidence, looking at disseminating it to appropriate audiences, but also making sure that it is uh, used and applied in the healthcare system at all levels with the ultimate goal of improving health. Those are quite um, complex definitions. And so we have our short KT um, definition or elevator pitch. And really knowledge translation are a set of methods for closing the knowledge to action gaps. So essentially it's a bridge between what we know and what we do. And these are the core elements uh, whenever you're looking at developing a KT plan. It's essentially the who, why, what, and how. And we're gonna go through each one of these um, and Sarah will provide examples to illustrate how, how this is done. And throughout all, you have to make sure that uh, there is project management and evaluation built in right from the start. And we'll talk about evaluation at the end. Uh, but it's very important to make sure that you have evaluation built into your plan. So we're going to start off with the why, which is essentially what is your goal. And you can start with the why or you can start with the who, um, but you most definitely don't want to start with the what. So we're going to start with the why. Um, Basically looking at why are you doing this research? What would you like to see happen as a result of doing this? And there are two broad goals typical of knowledge translation activities, uh, raising awareness and promoting action. And so those are the two ends of um, the continuum, but there's quite a lot of room in between. Um, and you may be looking to do both. But what's important is that your goals are appropriate based on the nature of the research that you're doing and also based on your target audience. And that's why sometimes it's useful to think about who your audience is and then determine what the goal is for reaching them. And then sometimes it's easier to think about, you know, what is your goal and then who needs to know as a result. So you want to make sure that, as I said, it's it's relevant to the type of research that you're doing. You don't want to be too um, ambitious. Um, so pilot studies, for instance, do not require wholesale application or practice change because there's not sufficient evidence. At that level, you're just looking at raising awareness among different groups. But with systematic reviews, uh, you probably should be informing practice change because it is a summary of all of the best available evidence. And so we do want to see some practice change. So, and as I said, some audiences just need to be informed, whereas others may need to actually change what they're doing. So your, your goals are linked to your audience. And then you can, as I said, you can start with the audience and work towards goals or start with the goals and identify which audiences need to be targeted. And when you're thinking about your goals, you want to consider the SMART format. And SMART is just an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, relevant and time bound. Those are all important considerations. So we came at this in a slightly different way because we already had a wonderful KT strategy to work within, which was 
is the Cochrane KT strategy. Um, and what we wanted to do is we really wanted to make sure that we were supporting the Cochrane strategy. Um, and so that already had some predefined goals for us to work within. So to begin with understanding which goals within the framework were achievable for us, we identified and mapped out all our current initiatives. We then grouped or categorized all our activities under five main areas of work. And these were priority setting, review production, methods development, training capacity building, <clears throat> and access to evidence. <clears throat> we then mapped our five work areas to the six themes within the KT framework. And the themes which covered multiple areas of work were flagged as our core activity areas. <clears throat> and these fell mainly under prioritization and co-production and packaging push and support to implementation and facilitating pull, which were associated with goal one, producing evidence, and goal two, accessible evidence within the KT strategy. Now going back to reflect on why we are doing this work and what we want to see happen as a result, we went back to our mandate as a field and our vision. And in order to achieve this, we set the goals to support the development of evidence in child health topics and to provide accessible evidence to our users. So Sarah mentioned um, knowledge users and we wanted to just, you know, visit this and to make sure it was clear what we meant when we talk about knowledge users. And knowledge users are really all those who might use, benefit from, or be impacted by the results of research. And this is just a little word cloud to illustrate who some of the Cochrane Child Health knowledge users are. So parents, clinicians, researchers, consumers, grandparents, caregivers, there's a number of different potential knowledge users that you might want to consider when you're looking at um, disseminating your, your research. And so the next part of your KT plan, once you've identified your goal, is identifying uh, who your knowledge users are or who your audience is. So basically, who needs to know about your research uh, and why? Who could it be important to? And when you're thinking about your knowledge users or audiences, you can start really broad um, and really brainstorm blue sky at everybody that might be impacted. So, and think about not just who might be impacted immediately, but also down the road and at all levels from individuals to uh, system, system levels. So there, there could be and often is more than one audience when you're doing this type of an exercise and it's acceptable to prioritize who you want to target, but you do just need to have some rationale for selecting one uh, over another. And we'll talk about what some of those reasons might be and it has to do with the uh, feasibility uh, ultimately. And after you've identified you know, your, your general audiences and you're trying to scope it down and prioritize, you wanna make sure that your audiences are precisely defined. So simply mentioning clinicians, managers, policymakers is not sufficiently specific to make it clear that the audience that you selected are actually appropriate to the identified goal. So if you're gonna talk about clinicians, you wanna know which clinicians. We're not gonna be targeting absolutely everybody and you wanna make sure that you're able to focus your, your plans. You wanna have um, your audiences identified as, as specific as possible. So in the context of Cochrane Child Health, we really broke our audiences down into two main groups. So those that we thought were immediately impacted, um, so those making decisions about children's health care, um, specifically pediatric clinicians or emergency physicians who need evidence to make informed care decisions, um, parents or familial caregivers who need the information to make informed care decisions for their children, um, as well as pediatric care centres who need the most um, recent and high quality evidence to make um, updates to practice guidelines. And those that we thought might be more broadly impacted were other child health researchers who might get a better understanding of research within child health, um, where different priority areas are, um, as well as child health policy makers um, and funding agencies. Because I think with a broader understanding of gaps in research and priority areas, they'll be impacted as well. So once you have your, your goals and your audience identified, you need to think about what message you're going to be sharing. So this is kind of an extension of your goals. So uh, if you're looking to raise awareness, what are 
be raising awareness about? If you're looking to promote uh, action, what is it that you want your audience to do differently? So this part of it is looking at what your audience needs to learn, know, or do differently. And of course, that should be based on what your research is exploring. And then you also want to consider um, how your message might change depending on which audience it's for. So you want to tailor your message for each specific audience member because what you tell patients is probably likely going to be, you'll have a slightly different focus than what you're going to be telling clinicians or administrators. So for instance, with patients, your focus might be more on quality of life or immediate impacts on their life. Um, such as you know, increased falls and that sort of thing. Whereas with clinicians, the focus is probably going to be on, on clinical events, you know, whether or not there's a decrease in cardiovascular events, heart failure, or stroke. Whereas your hospital administrators or policymakers, the focus is probably be on acute care costs or hospital admission, et cetera. So you want to think about what's important to them and how your research supports them and how and make sure that your message is tailored. Um, around around that. And you also want to think about who is the most credible messenger. So as you're developing your plan, who should be the one that's sharing this message or where should this message um, be coming from? And if you have knowledge user partners on, on your research team, uh, they're probably well situated to deliver your message for you. Once you have your message, then you need to sort of think about um, how you're going to be sharing your results. So what is your strategy? And as I said before, you want to make sure that you've got all the other pieces of your plan uh, created, the who and the how, or the why, before you get to the what. Quite often I've had researchers come to me and they just jump into the what. Well, we want to do a webinar, we want to do an infographic, without really thinking about who their audience is and what the message is. And so when you're thinking about your strategy, you have to think about who your audience is and what might be effective in uh, reaching them. So you need to understand the current state of your audience's knowledge, how they tend to use knowledge and the formats in which they prefer to receive their information. Do they like full reports? Do they want to see a summary or key messages only? Trying to understand how they use information will help you develop your, your strategy. And there's a continuum of activities um, or strategies that vary in their level of intensity from being very passive uh, to very active. And the level of effort, of course, increases as we move along this continuum, which is also something you need to take into consideration. So on the, the one end, the diffusion, this is akin to letting it happen. It's very passive and it's largely unplanned. And it really leaves it to the knowledge user to find the information. And if they find the information, it assumes they know what to do with it when they get it. And this, there's, it's still very important to publish and to present at conferences, but you can't just rely on that to get your message to your specific audience. So when we move a little bit further down that continuum to dissemination, this is where we're helping it happen. So it's a much more planned process and we're targeting our end users' needs. So the communication is tailored to your selected target audiences. You might be engaging with them to help them, uh, to help understand what information they need. And by doing this, we're encouraging use for decision-making and practice. And ultimately, you're making your research easier to understand and use. At the other end of the spectrum is implementation or application, that's that part of the definition. Um, where you're you're working to make it happen so it's much more involved you're encouraging adoption you're putting your evidence into practice and you're looking at systematic participation so the uptake is supported through the identification of barriers and ways to overcome these and it looks at behavior change so the strategies will be much more involved and even though i've got some examples here in the different categories there is quite a bit of uh, overlap between these categories um, and it just depends to what level you're going to be utilizing these strategies in your in your uh, plan so to put all of that into context i'm going to walk you through two examples from our field relating specifically to goal two which is providing accessible evidence 
needs to meet our knowledge users' needs. Mm. And, uh, and how we aim to achieve this goal through diffusion, dissemination, and in a perfect world, implementation. So first off, um, dissemination of Cochrane evidence to our specific audience of clinicians or researchers. Um, for this, we need to make sure that we channel the same platforms that clinicians and researchers are going to have access to. And the messages often provide evidence on a particular treatment option, provides data, and highlights the strength of the evidence, and often in what we call more technical language. Um, we disseminate this information through a variety of channels which these knowledge users are aware of and link in with. So a few of you might have seen um, the Cochrane channels, such as the newsletters. Um, we run the Cochrane Corners, and they're written by clinicians specifically for clinicians and to help with their practice. Um, we use the usual academic channels, such as conferences, publications, um, presentations, such as these webinars. Um, and then there's a few other clinical specific platforms such as um, the development of bottom line recommendations for use in clinical practice, um, pediatric grand rounds where um, all the pediatric clinicians in a team come together once a week to discuss a certain topic, um, as well as hospital e-bulletins. And the messaging that we get across to that looks very different to what we put out for another audience that we specifically target, which is parents and caregivers. Um, so to, in order to disseminate Cochrane evidence to this specific group, um, we use a very different type of messaging. Um, it's normally summary evidence. We use lay language. It's often put in an interactive format. And it's symptom driven. So a lot of the time, um, we're not going to put out information on, for example, uh, bronchiolitis. Because a lot of parents might not know what that is, but they might understand what symptoms their children are having. So such as what to do if your child has a cold and can't breathe. Um, so it's very much tailored to their level of understanding and their needs for information. And the platforms we've specifically been using for that include um, Twitter. We have blogs on our website. Um, and we developed in collaboration with um, Arch and Echo, who I'll talk about in a little bit, our whiteboard animation videos and interactive infographics. So really tools that we think parents will relate to and have access to rather than those more specific clinical or um, academic channels. 